Today we're going to talk a very special section of lead generation. I sent out a video a week ago that had 19 ideas about lead generation. One of those lead generations idea was this thing called a lead capture page. This is what I love. This is my favorite version of that. Billy Sauce, one of the new agents that's sitting here, asked me about it and I said, maybe I should do something. So what we're going to cover is one section of one type of lead generation. I think it's very intense. It works excellent for me and I use it in the real estate school. We use it in the brokerage. I use it in the Five Stones Mortgage. I use it in my hair salon. I'm going to show you how I use this lead capture system to generate leads. Now, the problem is it is actually broken into three different sections that are going to require you to use for this to completely work flawlessly. The concept behind it is to generate generate a lead, capture the lead, and then use a drip campaign to drip on the leads automatically so that you guys aren't having to remember to, did I email Bobby today? And then I got to email Sue. You can create all of this stuff up front and put it on autopilot, all right? So the biggest problem with this is that it does require all of the work up front and we'll talk more about it, all right? So the first section is the lead generation as it stands. You want to create a lead generation advertisement. Here's an example that I use in my hair salon to try and get new stylists to come work for me. The first thing I do is I put this out on a Facebook. You can use any platform you want. TikTok, Facebook, Pinterest, anything of that nature. The most important thing that you see is this catch. This is called the lead magnet right here. This lead magnet can be anything that you want to create. Five ways to sell your home faster. 10 ways to get the fleas off your dogs. It doesn't necessarily need to be about real estate. That's another thing to think about because the reality is all you're trying to do is capture their information, all right? So it could be five financial plans, five ways to buy stocks, something that would be a, a, a magnet enough to generate a person's interest. In this particular example here, I've got a free ebook called the top 15 T tax deductions. And this one is geared specifically to hairstylists, which actually work for you guys as well because they are independent contractor. So this is the lead gen section, the lead generation or the lead magnet. It is the whole idea is to draw that person in to want to get whatever you're giving them and deduct and giving you their information. So in this example, it says here, get your free guide specifically designed for hairstylists. Top 15 tax deductions go to this address. Now, we have completely left Facebook and this would be on your web page, on your personal web page. Notice the URL on this is theroom7.com. This software program is called WordPress. WordPress is free to put on your site. Matter of fact, they will allow you to generate 
these kind of pages and have sample pictures, or you can download your own picture. This is a just a picture that I downloaded. I didn't even do that. Yes. Are there any laws? Good question. If you're using WordPress, they have what they call royalty free pictures that you can use. All right. You can buy into a company if you do enough of the kind of stuff. I've got one called, let me see if it's autofills for me. You can make your own pictures. Like Canvas. Canvas is a competitor to WordPress. All right. You can also doesn't do you any good to take phone calls during training if you're going oh, into yeah. training. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> you can use about any system you want. If you are a programmer, you can program your own site. WordPress is free and it allows you to create this kind of setup without having to know programming. You just pick the picture, you pick the table, you, it'll ask you, do you want, what do you want to collect? Name, address, phone number, social security, date of birth, and you just click, oh, I want just their name and their email. Now, you guys may want to add phone number somewhere. Ah, uh, that wasn't spelled right. Mm, maybe that's not spelled right. Here's one that I just created for the new agents. Some of you may have seen this. I don't think so. I think it's relatively new. Same concept made with WordPress for new agents to onboard. First name, last name, email, phone number, message, all of that. That's a different amount of information. It's the same concept as here. On this one, all I want is their name and their email. So you can create this lead gen page to collect any data you want. Are you a buyer? Are you a seller? How soon do you want to buy? How soon do you want to sell? What do you owe on your house? What's your credit score? You can ask all these different things that you want to ask simply by creating that page. Do, do, do. Come on, page load. Still loading. Too many of y'all people. So when a new agent joins, this is what I'm asking for. First name, last name, your street address, your social security, your phone, your email. And remember all of you that gave me your bank information? This is the new version to collect all the bank information for new agents. Same concept. I'm still collecting data from a person that I want. Same thing here. But now watch this. Here's the where it starts getting fun. That top 15 tax guides that I've got on there, is something that I just made. I literally pulled it up out of my wazoo. You can go to Google and say ways to, maybe you can, sell your home faster. Oh, look, there's 15 secrets right there. Look at that. Somebody's already wrote this. Now, you may have to manipulate a lot of things. Copy and paste. 
Pick a selling strategy. Hire an experienced real estate agent. You can copy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And paste. I'll use a Word document and create my own little book. Now, I would suggest you might want to go in there and change a little bit so it doesn't look like you stole it. You know, you might want to put hire an experienced modeling group agent, hire an experienced Nico. Why should you hire me? Change it a little bit. But all you have to do is keep going back and forth and look at this. I can create a book. very quickly. And there is the book that you're going to give away. You don't need to rewrite this. You don't need to reproduce the wheel. You can steal most all of that. All right. So when the person gets here, they want that 15 page book. Billy, I'm going to use you again. Put their name in. Now here's the cool part of the software. Send me the guide. There it is. Now Billy, who just filled that information in, has this 15 page guide that she really wanted to get because she's a hairdresser and wanted to learn the 15 tax deductions that maybe she wasn't getting. So it's not rocket science to get them that document. We've already started creating another document and you can create that document in half an hour. Don't rewrite the wheel, man. Just go steal somebody else's stuff. Uh, we'll look at it in a second. Don't buy it right yet. All right. <clears throat> so you can create that because the concept is she has what she wanted, which was this 15 page document or this 15 but most notably, what I have got is her name and her email now. So that is the lead capture portion of this. The lead generation is this ad that is absolutely free that I put on Facebook. That's the first step, the lead gen, the lead generation. Use the lead capture is right there. And then what happens, and here's where it starts getting a little technical. I use a software program called Send in Blue. Send in Blue, I believe, is free and you get 300 emails a month to use. If you start using more than 300 emails a month, then you start paying for that. So it's called Send in Blue. There are a blue zillion of these. Constant Contact is another one. Big Purple Dot is another one, believe it or not. Bonzo, B-O-N-Z-O. That's the one Five Stones uses. Making matters current? I don't, what is that? It could be another one. There's all you really have to put is drip campaign and they'll give you a whole list of these companies that create this. All right. This is Send in Blue for the insurance company. I don't know if I've got contacts in this one. I think I just started this. May have to go to a different. Let me log into a different one. I'm sorry, it's KMC. So this is the Modulin Group information. What that form then does is feed into 
this list of contacts. And right here are all the agent's contacts. All of the agents are right here. So when I was sending emails out to you guys to announce this class, this is the program I was using to do it. All right? So what I've done is now every time somebody onboards the modeling group, right here, it literally goes into this contact list and now they are one of the agents so that when I send an email out, it will go out to multiple people all at one time. So that's the second part of this lead capture is to put it in this technical program. And then from here with send in blue, they have an automation I've created this. This is the drip campaign. This is where it starts getting technical because you have to ask yourself, how often do you want to email your client? Well, you might want to email them the second they hit the forms. Hey, thank you for the showing interest in our tax guide for 15 hairstylists. Then you may want to email them tomorrow. This is the plan that you're going to have to think of up front. Do you want to do it two times this week? Day one, day three, day seven, day nine, day 30. Do you want to do it every day? Do you want to do it, you know, every other day? You got to have that plan so that you can create this campaign. This one is called new agent. So as you can let's see if I can make that bigger. So what this is telling me is when a new agent hits the form, they submit the form, they get an email right away. And I call that email new agent email. That new agent email says, hey, welcome to the modeling group. Thank you for joining. I hope your career here is really good. Blah, 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 whatever you want to say. All right. Then notice that it says here, wait five days. So they get this new email, then five days later, if they have clicked on the button, it waits a minute and they get this email. If they haven't clicked on the button, remember I said something to you guys once about clicking the button to confirm that you got this email. If you didn't, you're gonna get a nasty email from me going, hey, you didn't confirm that you are a member of the modeling group. So you can see how this campaign plays out. Then they get a second email, then it waits a day. Then they get a third email, it waits a day. They get a fourth email. And you can have as many of these as you wanna build, 500. In the school, we send 170 emails to somebody that signs up saying, I have an interest in getting my real estate license. We have 170 emails that go out to them over the course of a two year time frame. That was our plan. You guys might want to market to them for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, one year. So you kind of have to create that email plan in your head. Then you have to write what each email says. So here's what, here's the first one they get when they sign up, they get a welcome email from me. Personally, I'd like to welcome you to the Modulin Group. Over the next few days and weeks, I'll be sending you some emails with some activities, insights, and more helps to get you started. Please click on this button to confirm the receipt. When they click on it, right here, it goes to the second email. I have spent a bunch of time writing these emails. 
Here's some more stuff for you. Think about how you would use this as a buyer or a seller. Hey, thanks for signing up for my eight ways to sell your homes faster. If you'd like a free CMA, here's my email and phone number. Call me right now. Unknown caller. And they did. See, that's how easy it works. This is the second email they get. There's three different articles. Single best piece of advice, 10 ways to get your first client, the concept of motivation. So the person would look at that and there is a page there that allows them to go over and see that email. Then it waits one day, wait one day, they get the next email. That is part of the lead nurturing. That's where you're going to spend a lot of time because you've got to come up with the plan. I want a one day, three day, five day, and then I'm going to do it every week for four months. Then day 12, day 19, day 26, and then I'll go after six months, I'll send them something once a month, boom, 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 for two years. Now you've got to go back and actually write that email for that Hey, I know it's been six months, we haven't talked, but I'm still in the business. When you're ready, let me know. You guys are victims of drip campaigns right now. Think about it. I mean, do you get stuff? Every time you buy something, you, like at Dick Sporting Goods, I bought golf balls yesterday. Before I got to the car, I got the email. Thanks for your purchase. Don't forget, next week we're having a sale on so-and-so. And then two days later, here's your Dick Sporting Goods coupon for the day. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Big companies are using this lead generation and drip campaign all the time. Why do you think they do it? Because it works. You want to stay out in front of your client so that the, maybe you talk to them every day for the first five days, and then it's once a week or three times a week, and then it becomes once a month. That plan can be however you set it up. And it's very easy. You can you just go in and create a new campaign. You can have multiple campaigns when you start getting really good. Back to your Facebook. Maybe you run an ad that says how to sell your home in 10 days. And then you have a second ad that says five ways to make your purchase offer bulletproof. So now you've got ads for sellers and buyers. In the case of this one, uh, <clears throat> Ian's not on here. Ian has set this up, but we use a different account. He's got a list of people and he actually names the list buyers, names the list sellers so that that form feeds into the buyer's list if they want to get that document for a buyer. <clears throat> so I've got a list of people that have opted in for, that I've called Evansville. 217 people have showed an interest in becoming an agent in Evansville. <clears throat> Ian set these up the other day. Ian's buyer, Ian's seller. He runs different ads for the buyer's list and different ads for the seller's list. You can run a different ad for investors. You can run a different ad for, you know, golf course homes. I've got a list called recruiting. They have all been moved out of that. And then we've got an onboarding. So there are three people that are currently in the process of getting our emails. And then the agents, there's 44 of you. So you can create multiple ads where the only difference would be this ad would say something different. So you're generating people that have an interest in selling their home, 
and you generate a list of people that have an interest in buying their home, in buying a home rather. Uh, golf, you've got them in five stones. Can I ask a question? question? Yeah. So on your ad on Facebook, is that something you post or you go into the ad manager and, and create specifically the ad? On this one, Fred, that's a post because it's free. That is literally just a post. You did you, can did you, you boost, boost it? it? Right, boost post right there. Okay. okay. If you want to boost it and spend five or 10 bucks, you can do that. You can actually go into your ad manager, like Fred was saying over here, uh, ad center, and I can create a paid ad. That's a whole separate class and strategy on how Facebook goes. I like just posting it, Fred, because it's free. All right. Here's another example of the same thing that Five Stones uses. We understand that not everybody can buy a house today. Some people have credit problem. So we actually, in this particular case, pay for ads that say how to build your credit or ways to get your credit strategy. They come to this page, they fill out the information. Billy, we're gonna use your name again. I don't know why your, my computer fills your name in. Boom, there's their report. That report took us all of about, look at it, it's six pages. And nothing on here is earth shattering. Eight strategies, get you a better credit score. Hey, how about review your credit, get a handle on your bills, aim for 30%, limit your requests, and make most of the uh, payments on time. Duh, it's very simple information. You just have packaged it in a manner that makes it look better to a client and you're using your uh, lead generation ad on Facebook to bring them into this page and they give us their information. Then this form feeds into the same thing in Send in Blue that says credit list. We have created 27 emails for people with challenged credit on how to increase their credit score. The idea is they follow all of the emails and then when they're done with their credit score has increased, they wanna buy a home and now guess who they call? Oh, well, who's that company that sent me all the stuff to help me get a better credit score? We should call Five Stones Mortgage. You go over here to Five Stones, you would see that. Mm. I have a question. Certainly. Maybe like kind of what you're talking about. The send in blue, the free sign up. Um, it says on here that it's unlimited contacts and 300 emails per day. Per month. Is that, that, is that the automated one that we can set up question is the 300 is that automated yeah no. no let me make sure you the email that you're going to send out you can create as many of those as you want when you send them out is when it's counting the 300 so if you've got 50 people in your contact list you create one email and send it out that's 50 all right 300 actually is not a lot if you think about it, because if you're sending out two or three a week, there's 12 emails that month. And now 12 times your 40 people, that's 480. You're already over your 300 limit. Is it 300 per day? Okay. So what I'm, what I'm saying is um, to, um, to be able to like automate this and set it, set it up, is that in the free one or is that an upgrade? No. You can automate in the free one. <clears throat> the only upgrade comes in when you get more than 300 emails per day. 
So if you've got one email going out, but now realize the good thing about what this automation does is people that hit your list yesterday might be getting email too today. But a person that hit your email just now is getting email one. So it keeps it all straight for you so that you don't have to remember, oh, I got to send Bob email number five and Carrie just signed up. So I got to send her email to the automation track does that part for you. You might only have one track called buyers. So form one might be going out to 10 people that hit your list today. Form two might be going out to the 10 people that hit yesterday. Now you've got 20 emails going out. 300 emails a day, maybe quite a bit. I mean, how many names you got in your database? I have about 100. Okay. So if you send them all an email today, but yet you get two new people or 10 new people on your ad today, there's 10 more. Now you're at 110 already. So <clears throat> 300 is not a bad number. Send, the good thing about Send in Blue, I'll tell you guys this now. I know how to use it. If you have questions, I can actually technically tell you how to set that up. If you want to use purple dot, I'm not real good at it. Bonzo, Colin can help you. There are a blue million of these. I'm actually a part of the Facebook group for Facebook marketing. Okay. Yeah, I have a lot of You want to know the problem with that? Yeah. The problem with that, it's also Buffini's data. You put it in his data. So he's going to say, well, yeah, if you want to quit paying for it, that's still our data. Yeah. Remax is real good at that, remember? That's why you export. Before. Yes, that's why you export. Where's Jeannie Cole when you need her? Where she lost all her contacts because they locked her out. All right. <clears throat> yeah. You can get most of them back, but. So this is the concept that I use. Big businesses are using it every day. Walmart uses it. That's why they think, can I get your email? That's why they ask you that. They're gonna put it in their database so that they can use the drip campaign to do it. The good thing about this is, is once you get it set up and you spend the two days writing the emails and do all that, it now goes onto autopilot and you don't have to worry about that. All you do now is answer the phone call when they call and say, hey, I just got your email. You're running a special today, 10% off all baseball bats. Yeah, come on in, I'll sell you a baseball bat. Another question. Do you have the option to see the bill in behind the scenes to see if the emails have been open? Question is, do you have the options to see if they have been open? Sort of. It will not tell you who actually did it. Otherwise, I'd have been yelling at you guys by now. Because when I sent that email out the other day, it told me how many of you guys actually opened the file. There were 16 people that never opened the email. Address not found. What do you mean, address not found? Just a picture. Not that email. The one, uh, where'd it go? I'm trying to find that. This is the modulin group. Statistics. That's. So that's of that workflow. It was a transactional email, was it not? But it's nice that you can see how many people opened it. So you can see, yeah. Like okay, so I sent that out the other day to 39 people. So that's that was sent out on Saturday. Saturday. This is the one that was sent out on Saturday. 
about this training. All right. 23 people opened it. It was sent to 39. It was delivered to 39. So don't anybody tell me I got the wrong email because it was delivered. None of them bounced. So nobody's email's wrong. 100% delivered. Only 22 of you opened the email. So I don't know who I'm looking at. But of the 39, 17 people didn't even bother to answer, look at the email I sent them. And it tells me how many people clicked, how many people unsubscribed, all of this. Now, nobody clicked on this email because I don't think I had a clickable link on it. It was just an information email. All right? <clears throat> yeah, that's the new member one. That's different. So yeah, it will do that. Now the problem, like I just told you is, it takes me to the list that I sent it to, but it doesn't tell me which 22 opened it. Cause if it did, I'd be having 16 phone calls on the people that didn't even bother opening my email. But apparently, uh, 17, apparently 17 people didn't do it. I would gather it's probably the 17 people that are not in here if it was my guess, which also coincidentally happened to be the same 17 people that are always going, I can't get any business. <clears throat> well, I wonder why. So yes, it does give you the statistic, but you don't know. Yes. The other good thing that Send in Blue will do, so will most of them, it will automatically add all the stuff that can spam requires so that they can unsubscribe. They will keep track. If they unsubscribe, then they come off your list and they don't, you don't have to worry about somebody, you going in and erasing the name. So I sent it out to here's the one that went to the Evansville people 18 people clicked on the link to go look at the uh, page for the modeling group seven people unsubscribed so that they don't want to hear any the good thing is if I send an email out to that list again it will not send it out to those seven for it so it truly will work that way if your clients unsubscribe for some reason. Yeah, so you're not just keep sending them stuff. So it eliminates the ones that don't want it. Notice in this st statistic, 238 people gave me their email. It was only delivered to 218. Hard bounce means it's wrong email. Soft bounce, bounce back because it was undeliverable. Down here at the bottom, 8% of the people clicked on that email saying, yes, I want to be an interest in an agent in Evansville. So now back to what I took, just becomes a numbers game. Send that out to 10,000 people, 8%, 800. That'd be a pretty good sized company. So yes, you can get statistics. I'm trying to there's all kinds of statistics in here you can get. The other thing this, this one does, I don't use it for this. We tried this once before. See right here, it says SMS credit. That's text message. So you can actually text your clients too. Send them the text. Is that part of the the SMS is an upgrade, but it's cheap. It's like 10,000 texts for a hundred bucks. No, it's a hundred dollars for 10,000. Oh, okay. They, it works a, a little different than the email plan. Look at that, 100 texts are $1.14. 10,000 texts 
or $114. But you get 10,000. It works slightly different. So in other words, it may take you six months to go through 10,000. It may take you two years, may take you one day, depending on how big your list is. I mean, if you're Walmart, so, but you, you use those. The problem with texts are this. It doesn't come from your phone number. It comes from an SMS sender. So what they end up getting is those texts that you think you got from me the other day that come up from a weird number. So usually your text has to say something like, hey, Stacy Stone here, and then text. So they know it's you because it's, it may come up from a 274 number on the text and they're gonna go, I don't know that number. That's the one problem that texts haven't fixed yet as far as I'm concerned with technology. Yeah. Once again, there's probably, a, a, yeah, thousands of companies that will do that. All right. So if you decide you want to text, the good thing is inside of this automation, you can mix your media. You can send an email day one, and then one minute later, send a text message to the that group of people and say, hey, I just sent you a real cool email. Go check it out. So now they get the email and the text. Bonzo allows you to create video files. You can actually send them a video. Hey, um, it's raining today, so I'm inside. Just want to let you know, go to the webpage and get my free ebook on five buyers. Here's the link below, have a good day. And you can add that in to your email. You can email the video, you can then send them a text. However you want to create and design this plan can be as intricate as you want it to be. I want to add something right there. Look at all these things. Add an email, add a text, add a notification. Notification would be like to me, so that I know that someone just responded. I can add it to the contact list. Add a delay. I want to wait until something happens. I want to send you an email, Stacy, and I'm going to wait until you click on one or the other before the next email goes. You click it today, you get the next email. You don't click it till next week, you don't get it till next week. So you can build these automations in any kind of crazy ways you want to do it. I can blacklist a contact. Record a conversation. See, this will allow you to send audio files. So send in blue is pretty cool. I like it. I use it. Colin uses Bonzo for five stones. I use send in blue for the other four companies because I like it. And honestly, real university, we actually don't. We use a custom one. The others, I have not got to 300 emails a day yet. So they're all free. All right, free is good. If you go back, like I said to Fred a minute ago, post, it's a post on Facebook, so it's free. So virtually all three of these steps, you can kind of do almost free. The hard part is for you people that want to set up your web page. Oops. setting up the web page. So here's the web page for our, my salon. Very basic. Look there, start an awesome career. Guess what that does? Same thing. It collects their name, their email, and a phone number. In this particular case, they then get a email as soon as they hit it. Hey, thanks for the interest in a new career. Raymond Modulin, the owner, will be calling you in the next 24 hours. And then they get three or four emails along the way. Same concept. You actually have to do a website. Yeah, so go get a new one. It's 11 bucks. Well, it's 11 bucks for the name. It's gonna cost you about $100 a year for basic hosting. 
and then you want to download WordPress into that hosting, WordPress is free and it will allow you to pick different themes to make your site look different. And then you can build the theme. So in Five Stones, this theme actually has an application right on the main page. Here's a little bit about Five Stones. Here's some numbers. We've got a mortgage calculator on the Five Stones website. If you don't use Five Stones, you can still use this calculator, by the way, if your client wants to know, you can calculate their monthly payment for them. We've got stuff about the agents. Then we got a recruiting video. And then, oh, look, lo and behold, we got another lead capture. So um, what's a good website? Um, I like HostGator. That's the problem that what she said was every thing with her last name. Well, your last name is friggin' Stone. Pretty common. <clears throat> what did you just get, the domain, Billy? Sell with sauce? Sauce sells real estate. But I can't hear that. That's a personal problem. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you said she couldn't get it up. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. If you've got a common name like Stone, you may have to go something more unique. You know? You know, I don't know if, if you, how many of you guys all got a site out there? It would be hard to do this without some kind of gen site, lead gen. I think you might be able to, in here, create a form that you could add directly into Facebook. So you could bypass where it would go straight to a form. Yeah, that's what I do. D does yours provide it? You can probably create a landing page, can't you, Jay? Uh, yes, it's it's a form that goes and it goes into my CRM. So I don't. Well, where do you? I don't ever leave the Facebook platform. Where are you posting your form? Uh, does it? Cre yeah, see, the landing page will create. This one will create a landing page, but obviously that's the premium plan, Stacy. CC. So it will actually let you create your own page without having a website, all right? And then whatever the address is of that page. Shay, have you got a sample? Do you know a sample of? Yeah, I can pull mine up that I have live right now. You have what? Um, um, I have live ads right now on Facebook. Where's your forms at? Uh, can you just go to the ads, Facebook ads library? Where, uh, what site? What's the name of your, just Jay Sykes? Uh, amazing Realty Team. Amazing Realty Team. Right there. So I, I don't do, I don't post on my page. I do paid ad, ads, ads. All right, so Fred, here's an example of Shay does not use the post for his ads. He only uses paid ads, which is gonna be hard for us to see your paid ad page. Yeah, you have to go to the Facebook ads library. Well, I, I won't, they won't let me log into it, will it, because it's, Yours. Oh, uh, yeah, true. It's not going to let me add or access to your ads. Do you have a page on your site? Yeah. yeah. 
if you go to any of the listings, it will, and then go to another one and it will pop up and it'll say, enter your information. Go to the next listing. It usually gives you like one or two. How do I go to the next listing? Hit back. There you go. Click on that one. Bam. Yeah. So he's got this is the pop up version on his site. And that was created on his site, the actual pop up, but he's using the same kind of concept here. Sign up for a free account, get your name, your email, your phone number, create my account, blah, 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 blah. And then he's got a drip campaign behind the scenes that uses that information. So now his first email would probably say, hey, thank you for being on my site. If you're really looking for a property, call me. Let me do it all for you in person, <clears throat> yada, yada, yada. That's what Zillow does. That's how Zillow gets all those people, all right? Zillow is doing nothing but lead gen, lead magnets, and drip campaigns. Told you, that's why it's so popular, is because it friggin' works. Except this one sucks. Where's your X out? I blow, Shay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I want you to sign up. Okay, I'll sign up, get free stuff from you. So that's another example on his site. He went with something amazing reality team, doesn't have anything to do with his name. So you may have to, you know, get sneaky about that. Best agent in Indy. When I start thinking of domain names, the problem that I have is you don't, don't not, you don't it. You don't want to limit yourself. When I bought the Century 21 franchise, at first, the Century 21 was named Indy Property Group. It was No, it was called Downtown Properties. Century 21, Downtown Properties. That's what we got approved by Century 21. But before they actually sent us the certificate, my partner and I were thinking, choose, do you think people that lived in the outside counties would use us because of the name Downtown Property? So we actually changed it with Century 21 to Preferred Properties. We were Century 21 Preferred Property Group. When you're thinking of domain names, try and keep that in mind. You don't want to put bestrealtorandgreenwood.com because then the first time you try and go and get a listing in Johnson or in Shelbyville, they're going to go, well, they're not looking for my house then if they're going to your website, you know. Best Indy on the South Side, Best Indianapolis Agent. Indiana, well, I saw one the other day, it was Indianapolis Realty. Sucks as a name. Because once if you do something in Brownsburg or Avon or Trafalgar or anything like that, nobody's going to be expecting that. So put some thought in. If you haven't got a web page, put some thought into it. All right, Sherry? I think here should be like short chick reality. I only say that because she posted something the other day, but she can do anything but reach the top shelf. <laughs> <clears throat> Call it bottom shelf reality. Now, it's probably not a good name. That's probably not a good name. I'll give $100 to the first person that creates the name poop reality. Just to, to prove a point, I want to try and prove a point. So these all three things, back to where we we're at, tie together. The lead gen is the ad and the collateral. It's called collateral. That's the report you give away. The lead capture is the form that you are going to use. And then the lead nurture is the drip campaign of that. I actually have reports that I've created that you guys are more than welcome to use.
Here's a bunch of at, uh, book ebooks I've already written. If you don't want to even do it, you're even too lazy to copy and paste, call me. <clears throat> Education extra quick little guide to the fastest way to sell a house. Five reasons you should never sell without a realtor. Six uh, reasons you should never buy or sell. Blah, 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 blah. Quick little guide to the five key factors in selling your home. I've already written a bunch of this stuff. You can take them, use them. Kind of ugly. I was in my ugly phase. All right. I know shades, but I'm still in that phase, so don't be a hater, man. That's an example of one that I've already created. Um, homeowner's maintenance schedule. Here's a really cool one. Actually tells them what to do for spring cleaning, summer maintenance, fall cleanup, and winter lockdown. Cute little poster, got little cool little pictures, already made. You wanna create an ad that says, you know, your seasonal guide to homeowner's maintenance checklist, give me your name and your email, here it is. There it is, I already got it done. Takes about 20 minutes to make any of these. That is the lead capture portion, or that's part of the lead gen. They call that the collateral. What are you going to give away? And the lead gen, <clears throat> you've got the actual ad itself and the collateral that you're gonna give away. The lead captures the form and then the lead nurture is the drip campaign or email campaign. They call them drip campaigns because you drip information on them slowly. <laughs> Are there any questions on any of that? I'm sure there's a hundred questions on that. Is there anything else I can cover without actually signing up for a new account and doing it all. I will tell you, it does take a little upfront, especially the uh, nurture part, because you're gonna have to create a plan. How often do you wanna get to them? How many emails? Then you've gotta write the emails. But once you've done it for a buyer, now you put it on autopilot. And you can make different ads every day. Make one day with a picture of your dog and send it to the same form. Next day is a picture of some girl smiling on a swing, same form. It goes to the same form, it's just different ads. <clears throat> they call that A-B testing. You can do A-B testing. One ad's got a, you know, a donkey on it, and the other ad's got a cow on it. Whichever one gets the best response, oh, very common in the internet to do A-B testing. I use this wording, how to find free money versus get a rebate from the government check. Which one performs better? That would be part of your statistics that we just talked about. That's A-B testing. I recommend HostGator. I like HostGator, very simple. They will load it for you. WordPress is free, you just load it in, you pay the hosting. You're in about $100 for the year, 105. Pick your domain and then start playing with WordPress. You can't break it, so that's the good thing. You don't like what had happened, log out, log back in, start again. The worst you're gonna do is spend time doing it. Um, there's three different plans. I mean, which plan do you suggest? 
Uh, I think I'm on the micro pan. Is there one called the micro? What's it called? The, I'm throwing the hatchling baby. The hatchling. The hatchling plan. Yeah, I'm, too. I'm not experiencing that to know what some of the upgrades are. Like, I don't know what I did. Okay, see, baby plan, see where it says unlimited websites? You won't need unlimited. You're just going to have your one. If you were doing something like I was doing, where I've got one for mortgage, I got one for the school, I got one for, I might, I th actually, I think I am on the baby plan because it allows me to do three or four different domains in the same plan. You probably won't. This is HostGator. It's room seven. Modulin insurance is on HostGator. So I'm on the unlimited, or the baby plan. But if you look at it, it's really 75 cents a month, another six bucks. So 275, I think is, you will pay it for the year. And I think you have to buy, at th if you buy one year, yeah, see that's a three year. If you wanna buy one year, it's $4 a month. You're gonna pay 50 bucks for your hosting. No, that's two cigars. Yeah, I told my wife the other day, you know the really only thing I spend money on now is golf and cigars and kids. I mean, I, uh, you can tell by my haircut I don't spend, and I own a freaking hair salon. The baby for 12 months is $5. So $4 a month for a year, the odds are, if you think you're going to be in the business for more than a year, get the three-year one. Hey, Siri, what's 36 times $2.75? 35. It's well, good. Displayed on your own phone. $99. So I must have got the hatchling for three years because I said, I told you it was, I thought it was $100. So for $100, you can get three years of hosting. You will have to then pick your domain See here, this will allow, enter your domain name. Let's find one for Stacy. I found one for sitting away. Yeah. Stone Dash Reality. All right, let me tell you the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. Somebody sees that and they're not used to putting dashes. So they go, oh, yeah, what was that? StoneReality.com. Yeah, put Stone Reality in. And their husband puts in Stone Reality, and he takes them to a real estate agent. I go, I didn't think that was her picture, but yeah, okay, call her. You send them directly to a competition. So that's one thing you got to just be worried about. You may not care. Yeah, well, and sometimes when the house, like, instead of dot com, you can get uh, what they call TDLs, other top level domains, .net, .org, dot all those. The difference is originally .org were for nonprofit organizations, .net for, were for web companies. In the last five years, they have kind of blurred the line and there are people that use it all the time. The problem is .com is the gold standard that most everybody remembers, all right? So they're going to say, oh, Stone Realty dot, yeah, probably dot com, because that's the gold standard. They've got all kinds of stuff now. They actually, you can get realtor dot com. You can get Stacy Stone dot realtor. If you go to the NAR's website, they allow you to buy a top level domain. I think I own Raymond Modulin dot realtor.
if you want to use that domain. But you can go out and get anything you want within reason that's not used. You cannot put StacyStoneRealtor.com because the NAR will probably slap you in the hand for that since Realtor is a reserved word. <laughs> yes? I have had mine. You got to talk. Yeah. I thought I heard somebody else talking, so I, I thought that. Oh, that's me. <laughs> that's weird. It's echoing. I, I'm so sorry. I've had mine with my dot com, sherry dash conkel dash realtor dot com, since about 2009 with GoDaddy. Can that be transferred over? Yes. GoDaddy has the same principle. You can go in and buy GoDaddy hosting plan for them. But you're also saying that Realtor.com may smack you if I've already had that for so many years. Yeah, I believe that they don't like you to use that word. Now, maybe the one exception might be if you use it after your own personal name. That's the way it is. Yeah. It's I don't think I don't think you could go out and get bestrealtor.com because they would come and go, that, no, you can't use that word. Okay. I think if you use your name, comma, realtor, is the only time we are allowed to use that word in an advertisement. You know that Facebook page I've got called Real Estate Professionals? It was actually called Real Estate, or it was actually called uh, Professional Realtor. And the uh, NAR called me about four days in and said I had to change the name of that group. So... But you also got dashes. I, I guess it works until it doesn't. Yeah. All right. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I GoDaddy's got their own. You can, is that up and running, uh, Sherry? No, it is not. Why not? Um, laziness to be perfectly honest and, and, right. and lack, lack of knowing what I'm doing. When you were showing Shays off there, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to just crawl in a hole because he's so tech savvy. It's too personal. Hold on. Some kind of technical issue. Are you there? Yes. Yeah. Now my TV one turns off. Son of a. <laughs> I can't get them both to come on at the same time. That was wild. The good thing is, Sherry, though, most of those, they're what they call plug and play. You can literally just go in and grab that picture and it'll say, oh, here's a section on listings. Now fill the listings in and it'll plug all that stuff in. You don't have to program, they're drop and play. I had it, so all, the I had it all plugged in for a while, that, about a year and a half ago, but then I was afraid to do these um, these parts where it says how to build your credit or whatever. I just I just was scared. Okay. Well, bring it in, and then we'll set it up and create it back again. Because I think this lead gen concept that we're talking about today, you need that web page of some sort. Yeah, I mean you can't really do this specific type of lead generation without a drip campaign software, without a web page, and probably an account on social media of some kind, Pinterest, Snapchat, any of those. 
All right. If you don't want to use these, don't want to do the technology, that'll be great. But you're going to probably have to do one of the other lead gens techniques. I'm losing all the pictures. Everybody's going away. Yeah. <clears throat> you you can you can do just Facebook forms on just an ad with on the website because I did that for a while. Um, but to do the landing pages, it works best with the website. Yeah. There's also something called Google Forms that's free. You could use Google Forms and and create that. I don't know where does it send the data. You would probably put it what a Google spreadsheet. You yeah, would, you can do Google Spreadsheet. Yeah, you can connect Google Forms to Google Spreadsheet, and there it's virtually free, but then the form you would put on Facebook. Yeah. The problem is you guys are going to get inundated or overwhelmed, and what ends up happening is you do nothing. You end up doing nothing. <laughs> Who's going to make you make her? Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Didn't take as long as I thought it'd take. <clears throat> That's good. My, I'm starting to get a sore throat. I taught all morning. Are there, I'm sure there are other questions. If you have other questions, feel free to send them to me or call, better yet, just call me and we'll sit down and go through it again and, you know, I can show you how I did it. I will tell you the good thing about all three of these pieces of the software is you can't tear them up. You go out and you spend the hundred dollars for your, your web page. Worst case scenario, you reset it and start again. All right. You cannot hurt the web page. You can't hurt Facebook. You can't hurt send in blue. If it doesn't work, we just set it up and do it again. Worst case, and you may have wasted a couple hours setting it up. I would suggest you write your drip campaign somewhere else, like in Word, so that you can just copy them over later. Write, you know, hey, email one, here's the five, pay, five lines. Email two is this, get all 30 or 40 of your emails and save those in Word. And then when you go to create your drip campaign, just copy, paste, save over there. That way, in case something happens, you're not didn't lose all your emails, all right? <clears throat> I'm good, are you guys okay? All right, everybody go out and get your domain by uh, the next week.